For a cyclic quadrilateral, each pair of opposite sides add up to 180 degrees. In this video, we will look at what this means, how to prove it, as well as investigating a couple of special cases. But first of all, what is a cyclic quadrilateral? Well, of course, we know that a quadrilateral is a shape with four sides and four corners. Here's an example quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is cyclic if it is possible to draw a circle that passes through all four corners. The quadrilateral shown here is not cyclic. We can draw a circle that passes through points A, C and D, but that circle doesn't pass through point B. Alternatively, we can draw a circle that passes through points A, B and C, but then that circle doesn't pass through point D. In fact, it is possible to draw a circle that passes through any three points, provided those three points are not in a straight line. We can't usually draw a circle that passes through all four corners of a quadrilateral. That is only possible if the quadrilateral is cyclic. For example, if we move point D so that it lies in the same circle as A, B and C, we will create a cyclic quadrilateral. So now let's look at the theorem. Here is another cyclic quadrilateral. We can move the corners round, but provided they remain on the same circle, it will still be a cyclic quad. The theorem says that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. This means that angles A and C add up to 180 degrees, because A and C are opposite corners. It also means that angles B and D add up to 180 degrees, because B and D are opposite corners. The converse is also true. If the quadrilateral is not cyclic, then the opposite angles do not add up to 180 degrees. For example, this quadrilateral is not cyclic because corner B is outside the circle that includes A, C and D. In fact, in this case, B plus D is less than 180, and A plus C is greater than 180. In the second example, corner B is inside the circle that includes A, C and D. In this case, B plus D is greater than 180, and A plus C is less than 180. Now we will prove this result. We will make use of the theorem that the angle at the centre of a circle is twice the angle at the circumference. There are links to a video and web page about that theorem in the description below. In this case, the angle at the centre is x, and the angle at the circumference is a, so we know that x equals 2a. We can apply this again for angle c. This time the angle at the centre is y, and the angle at the circumference is c, so we know that y equals 2c. It is also clear that angles x and y create a full rotation, so x plus y equals 360. Now we can replace x with 2a and y with 2c, so 2a plus 2c equals 360. Dividing both sides by 2 proves that the two opposite angles a and c add up to 180, which is the first half of the proof. We now need to prove the same thing for angles b and d. We know that the internal angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360, so a plus b plus c plus d equals 360. Since a plus c equals 180, we can write this as b plus d plus 180 equals 360. Subtracting 180 from both sides gives b plus d equals 180. So opposite sides a and c add up to 180, and opposite sides b and d add up to 180, which is what we set out to prove. We will now look at a couple of special cases. The first case is when the line BD forms a diameter of the circle. We know that the angle in a semicircle is a right angle. There are links to a video and web page about that theorem in the description below. This means that angle A will always be a right angle, no matter where on the circle the point A happens to be. It also means that angle C will always be a right angle, no matter where the point C happens to be. This gives a few interesting cases. If A, B and B, C are equal, the shape forms a kite that is symmetrical about B, D. In fact, this is a special type of kite called a right kite, where two of the angles are right angles. 
Right kites are always cyclic, other kites are never cyclic. In the case where AC is also a diameter, this means the angles B and D are also right angles. So the quadrilateral formed will have four right angles, which of course means it is a rectangle. Finally, if the two diameters AC and BD are at right angles, the shape will be a square. We also have the case where all four corners are in the same semicircle. In other words, the centre of the circle O is not inside the quadrilateral. It is easy to show that the theorem applies to this case too. As in the original case, x equals 2a. Finding y looks a little different, but in fact y still equals 2c. An easy way to see that is to move the point c further around the circle. Wherever c is, y equals 2c. And as before, x plus y equals 360. These three facts, x equals 2a, y equals 2c, and x plus y equals 360, are the facts we used to prove the theorem earlier. Those facts are still true in this case, so the theorem still holds. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, or join my Substack newsletter at graphicmaths.substack.com